Hi, everybody. Welcome to session three. Um, this session is on the role self-esteem plays in developing our capacity to love, to handle the power of love and the role self-esteem plays. And this is huge. This is great, big, huge. Um, so I want to jump into this subject. You know what? This is so interesting to me. I love this subject. And when I was doing the outline, I always feel like I have to, um, calm myself down because at this stage, at this stage in my life, there's so much that I have to shrink into such a small amount of time. And, um, I just have to tell you that it's not easy. You know, I want to, I want to share something with you. There's nothing to do with anything, but it's just a sign of the times. I went to the dentist this morning for a, a dental, just an or, ordinary kind of thing. And, um, how times have changed. So I go in there and I have my mask and the hygienist has her mask and I have to, you know, lay down on that t uh, seat for her to start her examination. And it didn't even occur to me to take my mask off. Didn't even occur to me. So she's all masked up with this plastic thing on top and I've got my mask on. And it's like the two of us are looking at each other, like how is she? And she said, okay. And I said, okay. And it didn't even occur to me to take my mask off. And she said, how would you suggest we proceed here? And I thought, what is she talking about? And of course I had this mask on and it just struck me as, oh my God, I have to take my mask off. Like it was so normal to be masked up, how things have changed. But maybe that's a good entry into how things have changed. And my, the point that I am trying to make really in every single session is things are changing and how they're changing. And if you think of the speed with which things have changed just this past year from this pandemic and how different our lives are. And in a sense, the speed at which our lives are changing has a great deal to do with this theme that is so important for me to convey that the way in which we have engaged in a relationship with power and love is in a kind of a physical way, a, a way that love is tactile and love is a power tool to becoming able to channel an energetic current that has the capacity to transform others, that has the capacity to help heal the whole, that has the capacity to work on the psychic field of holism. and to change things in a blink of an eye. This is the, this is the opportunity. This is the world that we're living in. The, the way I want to back off and talk for a moment about how does the, the universe, the divine, how does it influence human evolution? How does it influence what's happening in the world? We're not going to have apparitions. We're not going to have anything like that. But what, what does happen is that co human consciousness, the collective begins, to, you know, has downloads and it begins to, you know, shift gears and move in a certain direction and, and, and respond to certain inner impulses that come out of the blue. For example, for example, in the 60s, all of a sudden, everybody began to resonate to the idea, the thought, the concept that we co-create reality. 
It just started. It caught on. It caught fire as if there was an electric download that inspired the whole. And another thought form, another truth that just kind of downloaded into the collective was this template of holism. Become whole. Become whole now. Move toward holism. Move toward becoming whole. And out of that, out of that idea of holism came the body, mind, spirit template, came the way you now approach your health, how you approach your body, how you think about so many things in terms of thing, of the whole, of, of holistic, how you approach probably your food and your nutrition holistically, how you, wh where did that come from? But all of a sudden, holistic, whole, thinking in terms of whole, that is the new template as if that's the way of this age of energy energy is whole you can't chop it up you can't divide it things don't get divided until they become physical matter now this is really important think of it like 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 mist Mist, you can't divide mist. You can't chop it up. It's not choppable until it descends into physical matter like rain and then becomes water and water is frozen into ice. And then you can chop up the ice when it matterizes. I made that word up. When it matterizes. And because we're moving into this era of energy, it's essential for us to start thinking like in, in the laws of energy and in the, the power of energy. So we think, so we have this download about body, mind, spirit. We have this download about becoming whole. We have these thoughts about the whole planet. We develop this internet technology that's putting us in touch with the whole. We are always moving toward the whole. So in keeping with that, we have to evolve our capacity to embrace life holistically. We have to, we have to open up our inner net, our inner network to include the whole. In a way, we have to discover the power of love that could flow through us to the whole versus the lesser way where we are intimidated by others, by by, by people in the world, by that approach. In moving toward holism, it's as if the universe has, is organizing so many things that contained this directive. And this is how organic divinity works. There's no apparition on any mountain telling us, but everything is telling us that, that, we have to find a way to work together, to unify in the whole. And when I say tap into the power of love, let me be very clear here that I am not referring to any kind of, kind of sentimental love. I'm talking about the life force, the power of the life force that we we tap into recognizing this life force belongs to all of us. And maybe it's even better to use that and put the word love on the side for a moment, that it's the power of the life force itself that when we experience it personally, we call it love. But when we experience it impersonally, it 
it it feels like love, but it's bigger than love. It's the life force itself, and it belongs to everybody. It belongs to all life. And it is that force that has the capacity to rejuvenate a planet, to rejuvenate, to, to bring, to heal things, to heal diseases that ordinary means cannot do. So I think it is not a coincidence. It does not strike me the least bit peculiar at all that as we must move into holism, that we are confronting one <clears throat> challenge, one predicament, one incredible, um, they're not problems, they're collective challenges and crises after another that require the whole of us to resolve in order for them to be resolved from climate change to environmental problems to pandemics to, and I would add this to the list, to psychic illnesses and epidemics, the diseases that we, the, the sufferings that hum, human beings are now facing on the emotional psychic level that are reverberating through all of our societies, the collective depressions, the collective anxieties that we are all feeling when, and that are permeating through our collective that um, as they go into our youth are, are causing epidemics of suicide, epidemics of, of, of um, prolonged malaise and addiction that are in fact crippling so many people. So the, the choices that choices made that do not support becoming whole or healing in a whole way um, are choices that, um, the choices to move in the direction of fracturing, of staying, of, of choosing power over the life force will maintain crisis for us as it will maintain crisis for you personally. If I shrink this down to you personally, which I'm about to do, so you understand that what is in one is in the whole and that I'm going to make this very practical now and I'm going to take it down through your personal archetypes. So you, I need you to feel and I, this, this love and these choices in within the grit of your life. And that brings us to the subject of where self-esteem comes in and why self-esteem is this critical inner developmental stage that defines, um, is the defining characteristic of who we are. I mean, if we looked at certainly my parents or, or, or people um, prior to, let's say the 60s, even the, the but the, certainly the 60s, that people had a, certainly a sense of dignity and, and self-respect and um, um, identity and that ego, that ego health, that kind of thing. But self-esteem and the idea of self-empowerment and self-development the development of the self as we know it and the inner self, that was not a thing. That was not something that was common, that was not spoken of. I mean, I can't even imagine, I cannot even imagine my parents or my, my father saying something like, well, I have to get in touch with my inner self. I mean, nothing could be more preposterous. Nothing, nothing. But 
we require it. We require it. So I, I need to talk about the significance of where did that come from? Why why did this inner self anomaly just just blast into us these generations post nuclear age that and and that self esteem is such a critical part of our well being, our relationships, our health, our inner self, our sense of self. Where did that come from and why? Why, why? Is that such a critical part of you developing who you are? Why? What is that all about? And what does that have to do with your capacity to really love and empower other people and be at a place where you can detach from, move beyond this need for power. And by that I mean, in this world, where love is a battlefield, life is a battlefield, it's about um, winning, competition, it's about um, I, I can't love that person too much or like that person too much. It's all based on this exchange of who has what power. If I give them too much power, if I empower them too much, they might leave me. If I, if, if I support them too much, they might take off. I can only, I can only um, um, I mean, I can only love to the extent that it doesn't threaten me. Love is measured in power units in the lower part of the hourglass. It's measured in power units to maintain security, survival security. That is how love is measured. People will stay in relationships without love because of security, because it has to do with well, I'll exchange my safety. I don't need love. I love my safety more than this. So it's the power of safety. You see, what I mean by love is negotiated in the bo bottom half of our hourglass by what physically matters. So love is a very physically, a physical currency in the bottom half of your hourglass. It is um, negotiated. Like you, we will, peep, how many times, how many times I have been with people in workshops who have, who know that their partner, for example, is committing um, adultery, stepping out on them And in order to cope with that, they lower, they dampen, they anesthetize their, how they feel, their love, and they increase their need for security. And that's what they develop. They transit, transfer their affection to their need for security which softens the wounds of the heart. And they kind of do this negotiation for this power over that power. Security over love. This, what we will do to keep our physical world the way it is, oftentimes determines the extent to which we allow ourselves to feel the force of love. I need to explain that again. It's, it's a big, great, big, huge, big deal. Love is, this is such a powerful force. It, it, it is so um, transforming within us and around us 
that we, we, in, in all of its forms, whether it's romantic love, compassionate love, um, empathy, all of its variation, it's so powerful that oftentimes in order for us to maintain control over the way our world is, we have to turn down our capacity to feel love, to feel any variation of it, compassion, sympathy, empathy, whatever it is, we have to turn it to its lowest capacity, lowest burner, lowest vibration, the lowest way you want to feel it. And, and, and we do that because if we felt too much, we would then have to, the, the heart forces us to take action to do something about a situation. It won't leave us alone. Love comes through like a tsunami. That's why it's the life force. It's not just, love is not passive. It's this active, I've got to do something. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, I just can't, I can't live with myself unless I reconcile, unless I transform. Love is a transforming force. It, it, you see someone harmed or hurt or this or that. And it, if it floods through, if it comes through, you will, it will not let you rest because it is, love is not the right word. It is life force. It is this divine life force and it floods through you and it, it longs to transform. Whether it is a relationship or a friendship or the suffering of people, it doesn't matter. The life force, when it flows through you, its intention is to make better whatever has been targeted, whatever your heart has spotted, whatever your heart has spotted. It, it longs to transform that. And, and, and yourself included, yourself included, which, which, brings me to the subject of self-esteem, to the subject of holism, to the subject of this moment, and I have to put it all together. In, in this moment of, of this cosmic dictate of this era in which we are being on this journey toward a different level of consciousness, which we are. And that the, the constant impulse of this era is become whole, become healthy. Look, at you can't turn on the TV and not get commercials for vitamins, this, that, and the other. It doesn't matter if they're just two-bit commercials there's still, the theme is become healthy, become conscious of your health, become this, become that, go out and exercise. You can't see it anyway, a Peloton or Pelic, Pelic, Pelican, a Pelican, whatever, it's a bike. And, and it's always this exercise, doing something, always working out. Penguins? What? Well, I don't know what it is. It's a bicycle you get on and it talks to you. And and it, every single thing is about personal development, consciousness, getting, it's every single, every single place you look. It is be, this message of take charge and become whole, take charge and become whole, but at a deeper level. And this is the jewel at a deeper level. It is about becoming strong and whole and aware of our, the nature of our power, the nature of our power, becoming whole, taking charge of the whole of yourself, taking charge of the power of your breath, the power of your thoughts, the power of what you believe, the power of you self-esteem emerged out of that 
the inner self, our language emerged out of that. And it really, at the therapeutic level, it sound, it, it's all about, you know, processing. But at, a, at, at the holy level, at the power level, it's about developing the consciousness that you are in charge and responsible for the power that is your being. You, that's it. You are, you're, you're the one in charge. You're the one in charge of this whole force field, the life force that runs through you. You're the one, only you. And you're the one that has to be mindful of how it is you distribute this life force that is you into acts of creation, you. That is what life is, how we distribute our incredible power into acts of creation. Now, we can, we can um, dilute our power let others take charge of it out of fear. Dilute it into tribal stuff. I'll get to that in a minute. But, and, and dilute it into um, group fear patterns, group belief patterns. And agree with what everybody else thinks and let our energy just charge off like that. But we're never, we're never okay with that. We're never okay with that. If you sit back, you realize that who you are and what you truly want and how you truly want to be is empowered enough to close your eyes and say a prayer that says, what do you want me to do? What, what do you want me to do with this gift of life you've given me? Take me down deep. I want to listen and hear the instruction. What do you want me to do? And you actually want in your heart of hearts to be courageous enough to hear the instruction and follow it without first thinking, what will they say? What will they say? Will they think I'm crazy? You in your heart of hearts, I know it, I know it, I know it. You truly want to be able to hear God call you by name, feel that sense of guidance, and trust it more than anything you see in that world of physical power. You want the world behind your eye, the world of this inner mystical, energetic reality, this world, you want that world to be more real for you because you know it's more real. You want those lines of communication to be so clear and so real that you close your eyes and you say, what do you want? What am I doing here? Help me out here. How do I help that person? Tell me what to do. And even if it's this slight gut feeling, go just sit next to that person. I think I'm going to just go sit next to that person. Because you know, the moment you do, grace starts radiating through you. And that's all you need to do is sit next to that person because you know heaven will take care of the rest. Heaven will take care of the rest. You know exactly how the invisible holy world works. But you trust it because you know how the unseen world works now. You know exactly how it works. That's what I believe people really want. They want that kind of trust. They want to know that kind of power. They want to know the power that is love. They want to know that. They want to know and they want it running through them. They want that current of life force running through them because they know, every one of us knows, that's the current 
that makes all the difference in life. That's the one. That's the one.